In this video, we're going to take a look at neural surface reconstruction. I'm sure that many of you have heard of NVIDIA's Neuralangelo project, which for reasons unclear to me is a mashup of Neural and Michelangelo Buonarroti, the 15th century Italian sculptor. The NVIDIA project is linked in the video description if you want to check it out. I haven't bothered messing with it yet, but I plan to try it soon for a future video. Instead, I took a look to see if any of the mobile applications that have sprung up lately, like Polycam or Luma Labs, offered neural surface reconstruction, as they recently implemented Gaussian splat rendering after the method presented at SIGGRAPH gained popularity. As I've mentioned in previous videos, Gaussian splat rendering is great, as long as you don't need a 3D mesh or surface model, and everything that goes along with that, like the ability to 3D print it, bring it into Unity or Unreal and have collisions, physics, and shadows, or simply edit the model in a modeling software. With radiance fields, both nerfs and Gaussian splatted point clouds, it's currently not possible to do any of that, which limits their practicality for many people. I'm sure that will change in the future, but right now, they're somewhat limited. The only mobile reality capture app that I could find which implemented neural surface reconstruction was one called Curie Engine. The link to their website is in the video description. They also have a web interface, so if you want to upload photos taken with a camera, you can do that too. But in that case, it only uses traditional photogrammetry. They call their neural surface reconstruction featureless object, referring to the fact that traditional close range photogrammetry often has trouble with objects that lack features or surface detail that the software can identify across photographs and use as tie points. The objects I've chosen for this comparison are ones that photogrammetry usually has trouble with. They're relatively small and have uniform, reflective, or matte surfaces. I've processed these using the featureless object capture mode on Curie Engine. I've also captured the same objects using a mirrorless camera and processed those images using Curie's traditional photogrammetry approach, as well as using Agisoft Metashape, an established photogrammetry software that runs locally on your computer, so you don't need to upload anything to the cloud. Without further ado, let's take a look at some of these results. Now, for the most part, these are objects that I would probably never try to digitize using photogrammetry simply because over the past 15 years of working with Structure from Motion, I've seen what works and what doesn't. That said, I was fully expecting failure on many, if not all, of these objects. And while for the most part I got exactly what I was expecting, a few of the results really surprised me. This first object is an insulated coffee mug that is a kind of matte white powder-coated material with two stainless steel bands. Not only is the exterior surface going to be difficult for photogrammetry, the entire inside surface of this is stainless steel, and photogrammetry really doesn't like slender or thin surfaces. And these results here from Metashape are pretty typical for an object like this. If we look at the Curie Engine photogrammetry, it's basically the same story. These are very comparable results. Although I must say, the mesh here is much cleaner than the Metashape mesh. There's fewer holes, and we actually get some definition of the exterior and the interior surfaces, as well as that nice bevel along the, the side of the outside of the mug. However, the neural surface reconstruction results are interesting for two reasons. The first is that it did a pretty good job defining the exterior form of this mug. If we were interested in quickly reverse engineering this object, we could bring this into a 3D modeling software and have a good representation of the form. The other interesting thing is that it didn't reconstruct the hollow interior at all. It simply capped off the mesh and projected the texture onto it. For the scenario I was just describing, this might not be important because the interior here is a simple tapered cylinder, but if there was some important topographical detail in there that you wanted to capture, this would be a problem. Next up, we've got this 3D print I made from my own photogrammetric scan of the Chimera of Arezzo. This is an Etruscan bronze sculpture that's roughly life-size, so about the size of a small lion, although chimeras arguably never existed. The idea of scanning a real-world sculpture, 3D printing it, and then scanning it again and printing it again has always intrigued me, but I never tried it because I figured photogrammetry would have a terrible time with this type of material, 
specifically this white PLA 3D print material. Let's look at the Metashape result first. It's actually not awful, but it's not very good either. The software simply can't identify features on this white print material, so we get a very pockmarked result. The general form is there, but this would take a lot of work in ZBrush or another 3D sculpting software to clean this up and make it look decent or to work for 3D printing again. Interestingly, the Curie Engine photogrammetry is better, at least to my eye, than the Metashape result. It's not perfect, but it would be a much easier base mesh to start sculpting details into. Finally, the Curie Engine Neural Surface model is the best of the three in this case. It's got quite good detail, particularly in the clawed feet of the Chimera, and also the definition of the stylized mane of the lion. Finally, I picked a couple objects that I could actually see as a viable use case here. These are small tabletop gaming figures from the board game Scythe, which if you haven't heard of it, you should check it out, it's pretty fun. So I'm imagining a scenario where you've lost one of these, or maybe your dog got a hold of it and chewed it up and you want to replace it. For these objects, I've used a turntable workflow to give the photogrammetry approach a fighting chance, and the results were really surprising. I think this is basically ready to 3D print with very little manual cleanup. There's a bit of a loss of the fine detail, but nothing that would be noticeable on a consumer 3D print. The Curie Engine neural surface result is quite nice too, and one of the handy things that Curie Engine is doing seems to be automatically removing or cropping the table surface or the ground surface so that these could quite literally be downloaded and dropped into a slicer for 3D printing without any cleanup. And here we're looking at the Curie Engine Neural Surface Reconstruction model in ZBrush so you can see the topology of the, the mesh and it looks pretty good. I would say it's about on par with the Agisoft Metashape result. And of course the Curie result we got without having to do a turntable workflow, without needing a high resolution camera, without needing any 3D modeling software to remove the, the surface that these figures were standing on. So this result was literally just from the mobile phone, uploaded, and then you can download this relatively high resolution. It's only about 200,000 polygons, but that should be enough for 3D printing. So just using the mobile phone and their featureless scan mode, uh, we were able to get a, a pretty good result that's on par with what you would expect from a, I would say, a very detailed photogrammetric capture. And that's pretty cool. Furthermore, all these models we've been looking at again, these all are that featureless object scan workflow from Curie Engine where we get a lot of the benefits of the, the neural uh, processing that you get with nerfs or Gaussian splatting, but the end result is you get a mesh. And like I said, these aren't perfect, but they're pretty good. And considering that this feature is still in beta, uh, I think it's only going to get better. And the, the mesh will be improved, the texture mapping will be improved. So there's a lot to look forward to here. And what we've just been looking at uh, is another example of the Curie Engine featureless object scan, that neural surface reconstruction, because uh, I've had a lot of fun messing around with this over the past week, and I couldn't resist doing one more. So we're looking at a wine bottle that I scanned using my iPhone and that featureless object mode. And let's compare that to the Metashape result, as expected, Metashape just couldn't deal with the, the lack of surface texture and the reflectivity of this object. Uh, even though it's in a fairly well-lit area, photogrammetry just can't uh, handle that type of surface, so you get this very pockmarked result. Finally, I took that same data set and I Gaussian splatted it, and that's what we're looking at here, this Gaussian splatted uh, radiance field scene. And as I mentioned before, one of the drawbacks of Gaussian splatting is it's still effectively a point cloud. You cannot relight it at the moment. You can't 3D print it. 
Uh, it won't cast shadows. It won't uh, have collisions if you bring it into a real-time game engine. But what we can do is take the neural surface mesh and bring that into Unity alongside the Gaussian splatted point cloud and sort of get the best of both. So we get the, the unbounded scene that the Gaussian splatting captures, and we also can relight this mesh because it is a mesh uh, from the, the neural surface reconstruction. So we could replace the Gaussian splatted asset, keep the, the scene, and simply use the uh, neural surface mesh as the asset that we're, that we're interacting with in Unity here. So we can relight it. Uh, we could have things bounce off of it. We could have it tumble across the scene using physics and so on. So I think what will eventually become the norm is a combination of all these different methods. There's no silver bullet that's going to solve everything. Uh, each one is going to have its place. And I think at the moment, at least, uh, meshes still have a, a very important place in 3D workflows. Uh, not everything is going to transition to nerfs and Gaussian splatting because uh, there's at the at the moment there's not a lot you can do with them other than render out video. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I had fun making it. It was a lot of fun experimenting with this neural surface reconstruction. And honestly, the best part of it was it it works right on your phone. You don't have to install all sorts of uh, scripts and dependencies and you don't need a 24 gigabyte GPU like you need for NVIDIA's Neuralangelo. For a future video, I am going to get NVIDIA's Neuralangelo up and running and we can compare some of those results to the Curie Engine uh, neural surface reconstruction and see what those look like. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave those below the video and I'll do my best to reply. If you want to see a walkthrough or a tutorial on Curie Engine, that'd be a pretty easy video to make, so just let me know. Otherwise, see you next time.